want to preview the final two remaining NBA play-in games that are taking place tonight. Charlotte Hornets and the Atlanta Hawks and the San Antonio Spurs and the New Orleans Pelicans. So let's start with the, the Charlotte Hornets and the Atlanta Hawks. So for me, this is interesting because both of these two teams, I had them finishing in different positions coming into this postseason. The Charlotte Hornets were one of the teams that I thought could surprise a few folks and actually make the playoffs, let alone the play-in tournament. So the fact that they are in the play-in tournament, I'm pleased to see that. The Atlanta Hawks, though, this is a team that should have been vying for a top four or five seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, no one is suggesting that because they reached the Eastern Conference Conference Finals last season that they should have been the prohibitive favorite to return. No one was suggesting that. But I do think that in this instance, their experience, the star power they have with Trey Young, I think will be a little bit too much for the Charlotte Hornets. I love LaMelo Ball. I absolutely think he is special. Now, I don't know if he quite has the killer instinct as of yet to match that of his counterpart in Trey Young. I like what they're seeing out of Miles Bridges. I like Terry Rozier. I think it hurts them in this instance that they don't have Gordon Hayward playing, but you still have Montrez Harrell, who's been uh, who's been kind of dominant on the glass. So I, I like some of the pieces that they have on this team. I'm just concerned that their inexperience in this position is going to hurt them. The Hawks have been here before. They played in big games. They're going to be hosting them at the State Farm Arena. Uh, in Atlanta, and you look at the Atlanta Hawks roster, again, it's not just Trey Young. You've got Bogdanovich. You've got Clint Capella. You've got Danilo Gallinari coming off the bench. You, you, you've you got DeAndre Hunter that's still there. So they've got some depth. They've got some size. Kevin Herter. They've got shooting. I like Nate, I like Nate McMillan. I think he's done a fantastic job. I'm glad that he saw – that he got to see through the remainder of last season. I'm glad that they signed him to be the legitimate head coach, not on just an interim basis, to be their full-time head coach. I'm happy for him. And so, again, I just think that in this spot, as much as I think LaMelo Ball can shine, and and again, the, the Hornets have four guys that, that are scoring – 15 or more points per game. The problem is one of them in Gordon Hayward isn't playing. He's still injured, which is a shame for them that they haven't been able to do with him much of the year. So I think in this instance, the Atlanta Hawks are ultimately going to win that playing game and, and advance to, uh, to play the Cavs for the final playing spot. So I say the Hawks are going to win that matchup. And in the Western Conference with the San Antonio Spurs, and the New Orleans Pelicans, this one is difficult. This one's tough. I think that you have the storylines with the San Antonio Spurs, the, the floating, unspoken rumor. Is this Greg Popovich's last year coaching in the NBA? It certainly makes for compelling, compelling television. And the Spurs have been one of those teams where even though it's felt like they have a bunch of disparate parts – Keldon Johnson, DeJounte Murray, Jakob Podol. You don't really know what Lonnie Walker. You have so many kind of disparate parts on, on this team. You have Doug McDermott. That You're not really sure who the San Antonio Spurs are, but they're in this spot. And I do really like DeJounte Murray. I do really like him. They've got Zach Collins as well. There's a bunch of guys that you'd forget are on this team. Trey Jones, yet, yet they are on this team. And they do play, and they they kind of have this chip on their shoulder. So it's easy to just discount them and rule them out in this situation, but I don't think you can just dismiss them like that. On the flip side with the Pelicans, they obviously have more star power. They've got Brandon Ingram. They've got C.J. McCollum. I don't know if their depth is quite the same. The fact that Zion Williamson is not playing is a shame for basketball fans. Where I think we're all disappointed because if Zion Williamson were to join the Pelicans team that traded for C.J. McCollum for the second half of the year since the All-Star break, well, now I think they'd be a much more formidable team. Herbert Jones has been a really fantastic rookie 
rookie guard. He's got length. He's got height. Plays with a lot of confidence. You still have uh, Devontae Graham, who can stretch the floor and can light up any any team at any given moment in time. Now he hasn't been consistent, which has been his problem. But I still I still like the Pelicans overall their roster. So I'm probably going to take the Pelicans here for tonight against the Spurs. But again, with Popovich, with the uncertainty surrounding his head coaching mortality and how much longer he's going to stick around, would I be completely shocked if the Spurs pulled off some huge miracle here? Not really. Not really. But I think it's going to be I think it's going to be the Pelicans winning and the Hawks winning. Two of the home teams uh, advancing to play in the final playing game. So those are my those are my predictions.